All right. All right, guys. So here we go. Hey, guys. So I wanted to talk to you. Okay. I'm starting to cry already. Okay. Whew. Okay. So, guys, I can't even talk. I can't even talk. I can't even say nothing. So, um, all right, guys. So today is actually harder than yesterday. Whew. So let me explain. My name is Nazzy Naps, also known as Nazzy here on YouTube. And I had a dog named Shay Shay. She was 11 years old and four months. And, um, she was a pit bull, boxer mix. She was all white. She was so pretty. She was so loyal. And she was such a best friend. My friend, my best friend got killed. She got hit by a car um, last night, actually. It doesn't seem like it, but she got hit by a car like at 1.20 in the morning because I let her out to go potty. Now, I don't have a fence in the front yard, so I usually let her out. The same thing we've been doing for over 11 years is let her out, and she goes and potty. She doesn't go on the street. Well, when I let her out, I heard a noise outside because um, I had walked away, and I came back. I usually stand at the door, but I had walked away, and that's not, not uncommon for me to do. It's a regular potty night, and she, um, I heard a noise outside, so I ran to the door. And I didn't see my Shay Shay. I saw this fox across the street in my neighbor's yard. And he was, he was looking kind of weird. He was looking at me and peeking out because he heard me calling Shay Shay's name. I was saying, Shay Shay, Shay Shay. And she wouldn't come. My baby comes to me. I may have to call her a few times. But when I use my stronger military voice, she'll come. Now, Shay Shay is a pit bull boxer mix. I don't know if I said that or not. But she's a pit bull boxer mix. And she's stubborn. And um, she had a, a bull head, and she didn't want to move when I would call her sometimes. But when I put that tone on her, she would come. You can ask my viewers. Well, you don't know my viewers, but my viewers used to see it all the time. So I started calling her in my military voice. I used to call it, call it military mama voice, and my baby didn't come to me. So I'm looking at this fox. He's peeking at me, and he's looking at the way Shay Shay was because Shay Shay had gotten hit and she was in the middle of the street. So she kept, he kept looking at me and then running back and coming back out the bushes. And the more um, I looked at him, he was looking like she's over there. And another thing I realized too, he was actually hanging around. He was, he was hanging around her. He wasn't that close to her, but he was not too far from her either. So I said, to, I said to myself, I said, something about you, you got something to do with my Shay Shay. So I really, I went into a frantic panic mode and I just started screaming at the top of my lungs. And I, she wouldn't come. So I ran to the street to see her because it was dark. And I see on a boulevard and somebody had hit her because she was in the middle of the street and she was not moving at all. So I called her name to see if, if, if she had any kind of movement, but I knew she was gone when I looked at her really, really well after that. Because had she called me, baby, I would have dragged my baby right out that street. A bloody, busted up and everything. I would have dragged her out the street. Well, the fox was actually telling me that she was in the middle of the street. And he was trying to be with her. For, for years, I thought that fox were in the cat family. But actually, fox, I don't want to say foxes because that's not the right term. But fox are actually in the wolves family, in the dog family. It was instinctively him to stick around. He did never. He never did leave her until I started screaming her name so loud. I guess it freaked him out. And I think he was still around. He was just peeking. Anyway, so I see my baby in the middle of the street, and I am completely and utterly shocked. I couldn't believe what I saw. My baby would never leave me, never. So you're probably saying, well, why didn't you have a fizz in the front yard? I'm not allowed to have a fence in my front yard. The way my, the way my um, city is made, I'm not allowed to have a fence in my front yard. Well, why would you let her out in the middle of the night, maybe without a leash? Because I'm thinking, like I've always thought, she ain't going nowhere. She always just stay in the front yard like she normally does. And 
Although she doesn't go in the street, she still has the instinct, the instinct to go chase animals and prey. I don't know if my baby got hit on the way across the street or on the way back from across the street because she's coming home. My baby always comes home. So now I'm in a panic mode and I didn't know who to call. I didn't know who to talk to. I could have called my family, but I didn't want to wake them up. I could have called my friends. I didn't want to wake, wake them up. They all had to go to work. I didn't want to bog them down and start their day off with such horrible news. So I called the um, non-emergency phone number, which is, oh God, which is the police department for emergencies that's not that serious. And so when I called the lady, when I called dispatch, said, well, I'm going to send the police out to you. She sent these two wonderful police officers to me. They were so nice to me. They were so nice. And they were white. And you know, people always say, F the cops. We need cops. They're not just here. They're not just here to protect and serve. They're here to help us the best way they can possible. All cops are not dirty. I'm sorry, not saying cops. All police officers are not dirty. This better sent out the best police officers to me. Uh, one was a police officer and the other guy was um, a sheriff. Guys, today is worse than yesterday. Today is worse than yesterday. But, um, so when they came, the, the first officer, I'm sorry, the sheriff said, well, it's nothing we can really do because we can't get her out. The, you know, we can't do anything by removing her out the street. And so he said, what do you want us to do for you? And I said, please get my baby out the street. Please get her out the street because I don't want my neighbors to wake up and see her in the middle of the street all busted up and bloody because she was pretty, she was pretty, she got hit hard at top speed. So I, I'm thinking she ran out in the street. And the car didn't, I don't know what happened. I could easily go to my cameras and rewind the footage and see what happened. But I don't want that to stay in my brain, guys. I don't want to see that. So he said, okay. So the other officer came over and he, he was so sweet. And he said, I'm so sorry. And he was so compassionate. They were both saying they were sorry. So um, the other officer said, the one that came up, he said, you know what? Um, I'll get, I'll, I'll pull her out the street for you. I'll pull her over to the curb and, um, get her out the street. I'll, I'll go to get some gloves and I'll be right back. He said, you go stand on your porch. Don't move. Stand right there. I'll be right back. When I tell you guys, it seemed like I did like this and turn back around that cop, that police officer was back there with his, putting his gloves on. And I did a live stream on this too. Many of you guys may have seen that officer and you can hear him have such compassion in his voice. He just, he just kept saying he was sorry. He had his own pets. He has children. He can't imagine what, the, what I'm feeling like. And he was sincere. And the other uh, sheriff, he was sincere. So I'm standing on the porch. And I pull out my cell phone. And I get on live. And I, I couldn't believe how many people, how many viewers, how many subscribers just popped up on my live stream. At 1.30 or 1.40 or 1.50 or 2 o'clock in the morning, whatever it was. They were there. I couldn't, I can't imagine myself standing on my front porch with my cell phone by myself, not knowing who to talk to. My babies came through for me. My greasy babies came through for me. That's why I call my followers and my viewers on my channel, greasy babies, because we like us some hair grease. This is a natural hair channel. They was there. They were so concerned. So, oh, so the um, police officer um, came back to me. He said, okay, I got her over on the curb. Can you give me a blanket? I went in my garage and got him a blanket. He was on it. He said, all right. He came back to me. He said, I need a branch. I said, well, I went and found a big old heavy log. I said, well, this is what I got right here. And he said, I, he said at first he didn't want the branch. He wanted the, uh, he didn't want the log. He wanted the branch. But when he went back over there to, you know, I guess to, I guess the, the branch wasn't heavy enough to keep the blanket down. He wanted to put the blanket to cover her up and take the log to hold the blanket down so when traffic blows by, it don't blow up the blanket. 
And so finally they um they left. And then I was on the my cell phone with my live streamers. And my babies was there. And I was so upset. And I, and I could not cry. I was so numb. And I know somebody said, um, you know, you're so calm and, and you're not I guess people wanted me wanted me to have a reaction more than what I had. I couldn't. I didn't have no no reaction. My baby laying out in in the street. I am sh completely and utterly utterly shocked. But I was upset. It just didn't come out in tears. So, I um, told my I told my followers. I told my viewers. I said I gotta go. I gotta get off this phone because I gotta do the number two. <clears throat> I know that's gross, but it seems like I I had a. I had a horrible pit in my stomach, and it felt like somebody punched me in my heart, punched me in my stomach, and I just kept feeling nauseous, and I kept feeling a lump in my throat. And every time I would try to try to breathe and think about something, my stomach would hurt, and I had to go use the bathroom. And I did that like eight times yesterday before the sun came up. It was terrible, but I was okay. Um, so the, yesterday morning, I called the um, animal control people, uh, St. Louis County and Animal Control, and they told me they're not responsible of doing anything on my street because that's a like a little highway. And so they said for me to call Missouri uh, MoDOT, we call it MoDOT, which is Missouri De Department of Transportation. And when I hung up, guys, the MoDOT was out there. There was two trucks. I recorded that too. They were out there like within 10 or 15 minutes after the phone call. I'm like, they must have been nearby. And they came to pick my baby up. So for some reason, the guy who was actually trying to get her in the bag, I don't know what was wrong with him. It took him a long time to get her in the, in, in the bag to carry her away. So the other uh, work worker guy, he got the shovel. And he started kind of like picking her up and trying to put her in his bag. And the other guy went back, got another bag. And they just couldn't get her in the bag. And I'm looking at my baby. I'm seeing her legs. Her legs are stiff. She's all bloody. It was just terrible. But for some reason, it seemed like the guy who was trying to put her in the bag, I think he couldn't stand what he was seeing or he was sad. I don't know. He just could not get her in the bag. So the guy in the truck behind him, um, he, he was a big old guy. He stepped out and kind of like helped him out. And he ended up getting the, with, their, with the guy's assistance. They got him in the bag due to him. He picked my dog up. Now, y'all know Shay Shay was all, all muscle. She was, a, like I said, she's a pit bull boxer mix. She was solid. Now, when you put her, she was kind of lean. Her name is Shaylene, <laughs> which is really ironic that she had that name. But um, I called her Shay Shay because she did not respond to Shaylene. She was looking like, what is that name? That name is ugly. But when I would call her Shay Shay, her, her ears would perk up and she liked that name. But they put my little lean, little pity in that bag. And the guy was trying to, the big guy that got, got out the second truck, picked her up. And he was having, I don't think he had any trouble, but she was heavy. And you know when when uh, things are dead, it's more heavy weight. And he was swinging her and he he got the momentum, and he finally got my baby in the truck, and they drove away. That's when the emotion set in, guys. That's when I started feeling like, oh, my God. I think what was going on while I couldn't, why I couldn't cry at first is because I knew she was still here. She was still here. Although she was deceased, she was still here. But to see her, them take my baby away in that truck, that's when stuff got real, real. It was already real anyway, but it was a confirmation that my baby is gone. My baby will never leave me. Ask my followers. They know she's always in the mix. Probably somebody would probably say something like, well, you know, she would want you to be happy right now. Now that she's gone, don't worry about her. That's not true. Shay Shay wanted to be with me through thick and thin. She didn't care about me living without her. She wanted me to live with her. Permanently, together forever. So, I took my uncle to the doctor's appointment yesterday. That kept my mind off of it for a while. Mind you, mind you, I did not fall asleep the the night of the incident of the accident. I didn't fall asleep. I was trying to sleep. I couldn't sleep. So, I'm tired by this point. So, right when um, I I got with my uncle to go to the doctor's office. I started falling asleep. That's when I knew 
I, that's when I knew I was I still a human. Because I'm like, why am I not crying? How come I'm not showing no emotions? Why am I not? Am I mean or something? I mean, I've always heard that was mean. But was I being mean because I wasn't crying for my own dog? But it wasn't that. It was the fact that I wasn't ready to cry. I wasn't ready to let go. But once I saw it get care, dr driven away, I was ready. To, I had decided to let go. And that's when the emotion set in. So um, I'm going to tell you, uh, I was sitting in the doctor's office with my uncle. He just talked. All he wants to talk about is himself. And, of course, as he should because he's in the doctor's office. I started nodding off, and I didn't realize it. And so my uncle said, Angie? He calls me Angie. Are you asleep? Because I was sitting straight up. I remember sitting there just listening to him and the doctor talk. And I was just like this. And I just dozed off. My head wasn't, I don't think my head was down or anything. I think I was just sitting straight up. So um, later on again, later on again, the doctor was trying to hand me a piece of paper. And I didn't know it. I fell asleep right when he was handing me the paper. I mean, I was zunked out. Plus, you know, you guys, a lot of you guys know I have sleep apnea. When sleepy apnea people get sleepy, they go to sleep. Now, do I go to sleep often? No. But I know my shift and time of day to function. I know with that time of day I can work my best without falling asleep. And I was a 28-year bus driver. And I knew certain times of the day not to pick that. I mean, I, I did pick schedules I shouldn't have picked, but I, I was running a risk of going to sleep. But yesterday, we had an 11 o'clock appointment. We were down there at 1230 and um, this happened around 1230 or so when I started falling asleep. That's not the time of day I fall asleep. I was just exhausted mentally and emotionally I was getting drained. So yesterday I came on after I dealt with my, my uncle. I came home and it seemed like I got a flood of phone calls. All you guys left beautiful messages for me to read um, on my Instagram, on my um, especially on my YouTube that's my biggest social media. You guys leave the best messages. And you even gave me your phone numbers to call you personally. Y'all want to stay up with me. Y'all made me get back on the live, a second live, and say, hey, that's my baby. Uh, I can't think of her name right now. because I, I, That's one thing that's going on today. I, I can't remember stuff. I, I'm starting to not remember stuff. I had a breakdown earlier today. And I have been broken down ever. But I tell you something, guys, I can't breathe. I cannot breathe. I can't breathe. <sighs> this house is too quiet. I don't hear any tippy toes. I don't hear no barking. I don't hear no interruptions. I don't see nobody staring at me out the side eye. Shay Shay used to stare at me with that eye, baby. She used to be like, what you doing? And why you ain't doing it with me? And I can't pre pre prevent her death. I know a lot of people think that, we well, you know, if you would have did this, if you had a fence, if you would have not let her out, she wouldn't have been here. We, as natural, naturally, as humans, we always want to find something to blame. When you get through talking, all the 11 years she's been here, she ain't never had, that never happened. That was her way to go. You can't stop death. Well, this person committed suicide. That was in his book. That was his life before he was born. We all have a chapter. We all have a book and we have chapters in our lives. And this is how your life is going to be in each chapter. You can't stop that. Your life is already pre-written. So I don't need nobody coming over here telling me, well, you should have had a fence in the front yard. Well, you should have this. You, sh you should have done this. You should have done that. No, I shouldn't. I ain't have to do it all these years. She's a loyal girl. And, and it sounds harsh for me to say this, but it was just her way to die. She had to go. That was her way. We always want to blame somebody. No, stop doing that. I've accepted her death now. And I think that's why it's kicking in. But anyway, when I came home yesterday, I got all these phone calls from out of nowhere. I got phone calls from people that knew what happened with Shay Shay. But I had my other friends that called me out of nowhere. They didn't know anything about that. I'm like, why is all these, all these people calling me all of a sudden? So I told them what happened, and they got sad. But my, thanks to my followers and my viewers, I don't know how I would have made it. I don't know how I would have made it to that morning. Because when 6 o'clock in the a.m. came, I had to call my friend. She was on her way, on her way to work. She has, she has to be at work at 8 o'clock. She had just put her dog down on December 1st. And I mentioned that in one of my videos. I knew I could call her and talk, tell her what happened 
And I didn't have to, I knew I was going to break her down because she's already kind of emotionally upset already from her dog dying. And I couldn't wait for 6 o'clock to come. But baby, when the 6 o'clock came, my phone started at 6 o'clock a.m. Let me make that clear. Yesterday morning. When 6 o'clock came, my, my girls came through for me. My, my male would call me. She, she duoed me. You all may see her sometimes. She comments, Miss Mel, will she call me? Thank you. Thank you. My other buddy, uh, Monica, called me. I kept getting all these phone calls from out of nowhere. And then you guys are still living, leaving me messages all day. Nizzy, we love you. We love Shay Shay. We hate that that happened. And they, they didn't blame me for anything. I had a few people want to say something about having a fist. But for the most part, my babies didn't come at me like that. They're very supportive. I've never seen any of you guys in my life. Any of you, except for my uh, sister. Uh, uh, oh, Lord. Except for my sister. The, the, I can't even get our diva. What's her name? Uh, Divine Diva 71. That's my baby. I know what she looks like because we've done live streams together. I find myself staring off into, into space. Last night, I finally fell asleep. I fell asleep. All my friends who, who called me last night, they was like, you sleep? Hello? And I said, yeah. They said, are you sleep? And I'm like, I think I am. I'm going to let you go. Then the next phone call, call will come through. I felt myself dozing in and off, in and out on my conversations. And they was just nice. They said, it was just go and go get you some sleep. Even my um, subscriber, um, she's my friend too, Angela. Angela Jones, she was there for me too. She, she's a sweetie. And I don't know how I would have made it throughout the night after leaving my uncle because I was starting to feel the emotion weigh on me. I knew I was, I knew I was coming down off my numbness when I started going to sleep. I have not ate, eaten anything yet. I have not drank anything yet. I haven't eaten since 11 o'clock at night Monday. Here it is, Wednesday. Uh, 2.41 in the p.m. So that's old, well over, that's like well over 32 hours of not eating or drinking. My lips feel like, what's that guy named in um, New Jack City? Chris Rock had him ashen lips for some of you know, you know, he was doing like little powdery booger sugar. My lips look like that because I don't know if I can say that word on here. It looked like I've been snorting something because I have not drank any water. And the water I drink tastes so nasty. And the food I, I'll try to eat I don't even think about it. I don't even think about it. Yesterday, I told my uncle, I said, I'm getting this food out of my refrigerator. All this meat, this white, I saw this. When I opened my refrigerator yesterday and saw that white meat in my refrigerator, I was turned off. I'm like, I don't want you. So I took all the meat to my uncle. He's like, man, this is a lot of meat. I said, I don't want that in my refrigerator. And people was like, well, why in the world would you not want meat in, meat in your refrigerator? Because that's an animal. And it's white. It reminds me of my dog. Anything white in my refrigerator, it's got to go. I can't take it right now. And that's, I know that's kind of crazy to put those two together, but it's, it's real. I don't want to see that. So I, I don't have a desire to eat. I don't have no desire to drink anything, but I have been sipping on some water because I say you're dehydrated. You got to drink some water. I don't have any, and I have not been going to the bathroom because I don't have anything to go to the, I don't have anything pushing anything out. And, you know, it's just a freak, hot, hot freaking mess. So I fell asleep and I was able to get some good rest. And I would wake up in the middle of the morning like, where's she at? Where's she at? Why she ain't moving around and stuff? So this morning I woke up okay, and then I talked to my cousin like late in that morning, like 11.30. And that's when, for some reason, I don't know where, I started crying. I couldn't stop crying uncontrollably, and then I couldn't breathe. So I talked to my other girlfriend, Yolanda, and she said, breathe. And I couldn't breathe. But I did, I did eventually catch myself. But guys, today is harder than yesterday. It's hard. I don't hear no tippy toes around the house. Normally I keep my front door open. As soon as we wake up in the morning, we do our potty in and we open the front door so she can sit in the front door and watch the traffic and guard and bark and show off of me. She always wanted to show off of me. She would bark at somebody and look at me like, did I do that right? Like, yeah, you know you did that right. I said, you get that mother effer. And she'd be like, rrr, 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 rrr. my mama said, get you. Whatever I said, she wanted to do it. She always wanted to please me. And my baby is not here. So now I'm trying to figure out what's my next move. But right now I don't have to figure it out. 
I don't have to figure out what my next move is. Not right now, I don't, because I'm in the middle of grieving. And I'm so glad I am crying today, because you all ain't never seen me cry, because I'm not a crier. Not to say it's bad or anything, not to say I don't have no emotions, I'm just not a crier. Do I cry? Yes, I do cry. Do I cry off often? No, I don't cry that often. I remember somebody asking me years ago, how come you don't talk about what's going on in the world, like politics or, uh, you know, just stuff that's always negative? She didn't say that, but she said, how come you don't talk about stuff that's going around in the real world? I said, when I started my channel, I started my channel off as a natural hair channel. I knew the few, the few things I wanted to happen on my channel was grow my hair out really long, um, make people laugh and smile, and just have fun. Those were the th main three things I wanted to happen on my channel. Not one time I wanted to bring in negative deathly deadly stuff on my channel because there's a low there's a lot of channels out here already doing that being negative and talking about stuff i wanted my viewers to come here when they came to my channel this was a happy place did i talk about some negative things yes a little bit i touched on some negative things not much not much to where you mad when you get off my um video and you want to go cause a riot <laughs> but i did talk about a few negative things but i didn't want my channel set up that way do i get a lot of views no i do not do I care? At this time, no. Now, back in the day when I first started, I did care. When you're young and, and you're excited about your YouTube channel, you want all the numbers and all the views, all this stuff going up, 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 and you see the numbers going down, down, you feel sad about that. I'm not at, I've been doing my channel for over 10 years. I'm not there no more. I don't care if my views go up or down uh, to the point where I'm depressed. I used to get kind of sad, but right now, I'm, I'm okay with my channel. My channel doesn't have to grow no bigger than what it is. As long as I get a certain amount of views and a certain amount of money, I don't make that much money on this channel. I don't put an effort in it. I don't, I'm not negative enough on my channel. But when my viewers come to my channel, I don't want, oh God, can't get my lips to get dry. I need some water. I don't want nobody being angry. So that's why um, I had, that's when I started letting Shay Shay into the videos. And I asked my audience, I said, guys, you want me to show Shay Shay a little bit more? Yeah, bring in Shay Shay more. I never knew that you guys wanted to see Shay Shay. But when I started bringing her more, I started getting more followers, more engagement, more conversation, more everything, more compliments, more comments. I got everything when I started bringing her in the videos. Then people would just say, hey, where is, where is Shay Shay? My video had nothing to do with Shay Shay. Where is Shay Shay? Whereas Mama's Baby. And then they love when I sing the Mama's Baby song. I'm going to put her playlist up here. So if you guys want to watch her. Excuse me. You can. I'm not editing this video. You're going to see all these tears and all this stuff. But guys, today is, is, is that day that I have to just let myself cry. Let myself go through whatever it is I need to go through. So I'm trying to figure out should I continue doing my vlogmas. Because I still have more days to post videos. Or do I need to take off a day or two? How do I go on from here? And right now, I'm not going to worry about it. I, I, whatever happens, happens. If I want to post a video, I'm just going to post a video. I don't want anybody thinking, well, she ain't looking sad. Well, no, I got to keep on with my life because I'm still alive. I don't want to be held back because Shay Shay, she would want me to be held back because she would want to touch me and kiss me and stuff. No, but... Uh, <laughs> The show must go on. Life goes on. Eventually, I may get another puppy. And I might get one sooner than later. I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know what's going to happen. My whole life has changed. My life changed when my mom died in 2012. Then when I retired in 2020, that's when everything changed. And so now my life is starting all over again without my dog. And I'm going to a new job in January. Everything has changed. So I guess a lot of things just has to end and start with a new beginning. This is a new beginning, I guess. But I'm going to let you go, guys. I'm sorry if I got you crying. I don't mean to make you cry. But I just want to thank everybody for being there for me. Because you know, I'm a G. I don't know why I say that because I'm not a G. But the thug in me won't allow me to cry in person. But here I am being vulnerable. I love you guys. <laughs>
Why are you looking like that? What's going on with that sit? Shitty. <laughs> You're so pretty. You're a pretty girl. Do you want some um you want some bacon? You know, every time I ask you a question, you blink one eye. You wanna go outside? You my mama's baby? You wanna go for a ride? Mm. You my mama's baby? You my baby girl? Maybe not so much. You always turn your head when I point the camera at you. Hey, I see you. I see your eye. <laughs> Side eye, Shay Shay. Side eye, Shay Shay. Side eye, Shay Shay. Shay Shay. Shay Shay. Hey, girl, come on, let's go. Oh, looky, looky. I got your attention. I have a friend, I have a friend, a friend indeed. One who supplies, one who supplies my every need. Follow me, follow me.